a star in the east on Christmas morn. Light up, shepherd, and follow. It will lead to the place where the Savior's born. Light up, shepherd, and follow. Well, good morning. You don't have to be a shepherd. The call this morning is to follow Jesus, and that's what we're doing here this morning. Uh, and I just thank you for your attendance this morning, and that is a beautiful gift in itself. You know, the world would be a lot better place if more of us were better at just showing up. Amen? Uh, as we get started, though, uh, I just want to welcome you all. If you're new with us, if you'd like to connect, um, we have a great texting service, 308-730-4040. It connects you to all of the staff instantly. Um, so if you're brand new, text welcome. If you have any questions or want to respond in any way, that's an easy way to do so. We also have our connect cards in the pews as well. Great for sharing prayer requests or comments or words of encouragement, what have you. Um, that's there as well. So... Uh, one of the things you may want to share this season is a prayer request. We believe in the power of prayer here at First Church, and we are committed to praying for you. Um, so however you can share that prayer request, joy, concern, anytime, I can about guarantee that any of the staff, as soon as we see the notification on our phone, you're getting prayed, prayed for then, and then we also add it to our weekly list where we run down and pray for all of those as well. So... Tonight, we're really excited. Our student ministry, 6th through 12th graders, are going to be having a party uh, here at the church, and we're really excited. Denise has promised to give like a thousand. There's not a prize for every kid who comes. What kind of party is this? A fun party? Okay. 
I guess it's about the presence, not the presence. See what I did there? Okay, all right. Somebody got me going on dad jokes this morning, and I can't seem to stop. Anyway, uh, as, we're, as we're continuing, that's tonight at 6 to, uh, 8, 6.30 to 8 o'clock. Um, it doesn't matter if you're a regular attender of, or, or anything like that. What we believe is church, as you'll, we'll talk about later, should be joy-filled. And sometimes you just got to show up and have some fun. And that's a great way to jump in. So 6th through 12th graders, again, this evening, uh, doors open at 6. Next, this coming... This coming Wednesday, we're going to have our kids pageant, if you will. It's a neat, a really neat play and performance. Some of our children have worked really hard, and it shows. They are doing a great job with some of their lines and telling the Christmas story in a new, fun, and understandable, accessible way. So uh, I invite you to come out this Wednesday, 615, here in the sanctuary. Uh, you'll get to hear our students, our, our children, and uh, hear them sing. You'll get to sing yourself some of our favorite Christmas carols, um, and I believe there's going to be some cookies afterwards. So we're really excited. This next weekend, we will have our regular services Saturday night at 6.15, Sunday at 9, Sunday at 10.30, and then I hear Pastor Mike's preparing a whole different message for 5, 7, and 11 because it's Christmas Eve, or you're going to duplicate. Oh, at 5, 7, and 11, they'll be the same, but different from Sunday morning? Okay, that's good. That's, that's what we're supposed to do, I think. Yeah, okay. Is that what the bishop said? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> I'm so sorry, folks. It's a joy-filled morning. Can you tell? I just, it's, it's just, it, church should be fun sometimes. And we do have a lot of fun here. And next week, of course, during our candlelight services, there will be very intimate and cool moments. And just if you can join us, we really hope you can. If you have to be on the road for whatever reason, um, tune in online at five o'clock. That's the service we will stream. Um, and then we'll make that available on our uh, website as well. Okay, coming into the new year and what we've been talking about a lot through this series and what we've been doing is talking a lot about small groups. Um, we've been practicing that too with our Advent small groups. And it's a value that I really believe in. It's one that Pastor Mike keeps lifting up as well. And so there's many opportunities to continue in the new year. Um, there's a men's only group that Pastor Mike will be leading. Uh, be sure to catch with him. It starts first. Um, Financial Peace University, that one's really great and practical. But the one that I wanted to share with you all today is what on earth am I here for? It's a uh, um, it's a question I'm not really comfortable at answering, but um, I'm going to lead the group anyway. It's six weeks, and it's a really cool adventure of just starting off the year, considering our purpose in life, considering how God works with that purpose and our calling as Christians. So if you're at all interested in it, uh, text the number, let me know you're coming so we can get you a book, um, and that's going to be a great, great study starting at the end of January. That's what we have for announcements today. I have a little challenge for you as we begin our worship today. We're going to begin with uh, Mary's song in our call to celebration. And sometimes when we read Mary's song, it's so sweet. But I want you to read it with joy today in your responsive reading as you read it with Pastor Mike. Lift your voice in adoration for God. Let us stand and join our voices together in our call to celebration. Well, we are so excited that everyone's in worship, and Micah's right. We need to read this with boldness because that's who God has called us to be. So I invite you to follow along in this call to celebration on the screens. My soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his servant. For the mighty one has done great things. And holy is his name. Amen. Our opening hymn today is He is Born. It's number 228. Words are also on the screen. Thank you. 
Amen. You may be seated. I'll invite the children forward for our children's moment. All right. So can you think of something that makes you really happy? Enemies. I know. He said the knees. Uh huh. Your mommy or your daddy? Yeah. How about? Um, I don't know. Is there a song that makes you very happy? Yeah. Is there? I don't know. When you get to play with friends, you feel really happy when you have friends over to your house, that, right? So, do you know what's the difference between being happy and having joy? This, is it the same thing? Maybe? Kind of? Well, this is my balloon. This is happiness. And this is my balloon, joy. And they both look the same, right, from the outside? From the outside, right? We can tell there's something different inside of this one, right? Yeah. But they both look the same from the outside. That's happiness and joy. Sometimes they look pretty much the same. And we don't know there's really a difference. So the difference is that happiness is a feeling. It's something that you feel uh, if things are going well, okay? So if you hear a happy song, you feel happy. If your mom cooks your favorite meal, you feel happy. But if something bad happens, then you're not happy anymore. So let's say this is something bad, all right? So this is hap happiness, then something bad happens, and you no longer have happiness. <laughs> Sorry. All right, but joy, it's not the same, the same way. I'm going to read something really quick, okay, from Habakkuk 3, verse 17 and 18. It says, even though the fig trees have no blossoms and there are no grapes on the vines, even though the olive crops fails and the fields lie empty and barren, even though the flocks die in the fields and the cattle barns are empty, yet I will rejoice in the Lord and I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. So what's that what this is telling us is that even though things can go wrong, you can still be joyful. And how does this happen? Well, <laughs> I, I hope it works too, sweetie. Hey. <laughs> All right. So according to this, even if bad things happened, our joy cannot go away. Okay. Right. So, here's a bad thing. What do you think is going to happen? But joy is not supposed to go away if bad things happen. I am. It even changed to a different color. That's joy for us. Thank you, Micah. <laughs> Trying to get me wet. So, this is the same thing. With joy and happiness. Joy, even though bad things happen, we still have joy. And happiness, when bad things happen, it goes away. So how, why? Well, because joy is a feeling. I mean, happiness is a feeling. And joy is a knowing. Knowing that God is good. Knowing that God loves us. Knowing that he takes care of us. So how do we get to know God? When we read the Bible, when we come to church, when we pray, that's how we get to know him. And that's how we get joy in our lives. Amen? Amen. All right, let's go ahead and pray. Dear Lord, thank you for everything you do for us. Thank you for loving us and for helping us trust you that you take care of us. And that help us find joy even when things are going hard. Help us know that you are taking care of us and know that you have control of everything. And help us be joyful even when things are bad. In Jesus' name, amen. 
All right. You guys can go to Pastor Mike and get some candy. Ever since I was little, I love the story of David. He's kind of my hero. Well, at least he used to be. I mean, who doesn't like David's story? The little boy who takes on the giant? The shepherd who becomes a king? Can you imagine the joy that the Israelite army felt when Goliath fell down? It must have been quite a celebration. But you know what's crazy? David wasn't even supposed to be there. He wasn't one of the soldiers. As the baby of his family, his dad, Jesse, only sent David there with some cheese and bread for his brothers. I bet his dad had no idea David would become a hero. As a kid, I've always wanted to be like David. So wherever I went, I came prepared with food. I mean, you never know when you have to fight a giant. And it's kind of nice to have a snack. Who knew how important my little lunch would be? No, I didn't get to fight a giant, but I got to help Jesus. Everyone was talking about how smart he was and how he could heal people who were sick. I mean, it wasn't as close fighting a giant, but I wanted to go see. And of course, I packed my lunch as always. You've got to understand, Jesus was a big deal. You were lucky if you got to sit near him up close. Maybe you get to see him the expression on his face when he called out a Pharisee or told a joke. There were so many people, I could barely see Jesus through the crowd. But then, one of the disciples told me to come up front and to bring my lunch. Turns out, everyone was so excited, they forgot to pack their own lunch. I hope God would use my lunch to slay a giant. Instead, Jesus took my five loaves and two fish so he could feed this huge crowd. At least 5,000 people. Everyone was so excited, you could feel the joy. That's when Jesus became my new hero. Even if he didn't slay a giant, when we were eating our lunch, one of the disciples told me about when Jesus was a little boy. How when he was a baby, his mom and dad had to put him in a manger. It doesn't sound like they planned that out very well. I wonder if they've packed a lunch. But that baby... He grew up to be a savior. I think that's why I love Advent. You never know what God's going to do. It reminds us that with Jesus, Jesus can take what we have and make him more than we could ever imagine. That's a pretty awesome Christmas gift. Today I light three candles. The candle of hope. candle of love. And today, we have the candle of joy. We add, or er, Jesus receives the faith of even the smallest child. May your faith kindle and burn brightly for God this Advent season and every season of your life. Amen. Well, thank you, Miles. Let's give him a round of applause. Well, the life of the church is always busy, and this week was no exception. There were lots of things going on throughout the life of the church. On Friday, we, had, uh, we hosted the Opportunity Center, and they had their big Christmas party here. 150 or so people showed up. Uh, the tables were just immaculate. It was awesome to, be, to see. But on Friday, I also had a chance to do a celebration of life for John Dean Peterson, one of our Saturday night saints, and what an incredible tribute it was. At the service, uh, I had an opportunity to chat with a, a little girl from our preschool program. Now, she originally started coming just to the preschool, and then she's been coming on Wednesday nights as well, and she loves it. 
And I'm a kid at heart, so, you know, we were making faces at each other and things we probably shouldn't have been doing in the middle of the service. But we had a great time. And afterwards, at the meal, I got to chat with her grandma a little bit. And she says, you know, she just, she loves everything about the church. <laughs> she's so excited to be there. And she's always telling me about the new things she learned or what each space is for. And then grandma gets a little grin. She says, during the funeral, she told me when you got ready to pray, she says, grandma, fold your hands. And she says, I, I am. And she says, no, like this. Very specific on the way it was supposed to be. And in the midst of that moment, I just realized what an incredible gift it is to be the church. What an amazing opportunity it is to see this young disciple helping teach her grandma how to pray as well. Sometimes in the church, we get really excited about the big events, the, the 150 that were here for that celebration, the five or 600 that will be here for Christmas Eve services. And those are amazing moments. But this little moment with that girl is, is just as important. When we talk about investing in the life of the church, when we talk about the mission and ministry of the church, it's not just those big flashy moments. It is this little girl who has a passion to share the gospel in her own way. When we talk about giving our tithes and offerings this season, that's what we invest in. Not just a building, not just a big service, but a chance for this little girl to know Jesus and to share Jesus with the world as well. You can always give in the offering plates in the back on your way out. You can give online through our website, or you can mail a check to us. However you feel led to give, know that what you invest in isn't just the big moments but those amazing little moments, moments like this little girl who shared Christ in her own way. So we continue in worship today. We have special music from our choir, and so I invite you to turn your attention to them today.
I love Christmas music um, and a lot of the hymns that we sing, and year-round, but especially around Christmas, because these lullabies that we sing, Silent Night, Away in a Manger, they're prayers, aren't they? Be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask thee to stay close by me forever, and love me, I pray. That is the prayer of our hearts, and as we seek the joy of the Lord this morning, sometimes we need to humble ourselves and let that lullaby soothe our souls. I believe that's one of the many ways the Holy Spirit works in us and through us. We're going to continue in our worship now in a time of prayer, and I invite you to join me in your favorite posture of prayer. Let us pray. Well, dear Jesus, the magnitude of your coming into this world is one that is just maybe impossible to fathom. We hear how the angels broke through the heavens into the skies to tangibly see and how all of the heavenly host couldn't help but to sing your praises. Jesus, that is our desire and worship today. That is an inkling of our hearts to draw closer to you and to give you the praise and the glory that you deserve. Just as the seraphim and cherubim are around your throne today in heaven, Jesus and Lord Father, we worship you. But at the same time, Jesus, there are distractions pulling at our hearts pulling our minds and our work away from you. Let me be the first to say I'm sorry for when distractions take over. And not just the little ones, but the pride, the envy, and the slander that's too quick to come from my lips. Jesus, there's other things that are on our hearts that we're concerned about, but first we ask that you do your work in us because we desire to be the work of you and your kingdom as well. And we know we want your forgiveness in order to make that happen. So with grace today, we ask that you would be with us to first be a part of answering the prayers in our own lives, but then beyond there, Jesus, don't stop there. Help us to be the kind word, the encouraging word someone needs. Help us to be the hands and feet when somebody needs a practical healing. And help us to reflect the joy that only you can give that outlasts any circumstance. Jesus, there are so many things for us to pray about today. And if we were to list everyone, Jesus, you know that we would be here for ages. So instead, instead of putting words to our prayers, we just ask that you would know our hearts and our longing for togetherness, united with your Holy Spirit in this congregation, as we pray together the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, we're going to continue in our worship with uh, a medley of uh, Christmas carols. I invite you to stand as you're able. The lyrics are on the screen, and our choir will lead us.
be seated. This Christmas, we've been having our young children once again share the message with us, and it's just, it's always such a great time. Today, though, uh, we're doing, we're having a student that you may not know, you may not recognize. Um, his name's Weston, um, and he's from our Brady Connection, and they're in worship and hearing him now, and he's the same age as some of our other readers, but I got to tell you something, poor Weston. He, he struggles standing still, okay? So um, you may hear that in the recording, but I, I just thought of this. You know how we're called to be like children sometimes? Hear the joy and excitement in this child. Read scripture. It is so appropriate for our worship today, and one of those God things that it just worked out that we had Weston reading our scripture. I'll turn your attention to the screens for our lesson today. Hi, I'm Weston. Today's scripture is Luke 1, 39 through 45. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and I greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and sprang with a loud cry. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me? As a mother of my Lord comes to me, for as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed it she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. We feel the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Yes, Weston is definitely a little ball of energy and joy as well. I, I'm sure it was entertaining trying to follow him with a microphone with stuff like that. But entertain, yeah, yeah, uh huh, yeah. Well, I, I've loved our connection with Brady. It's a neat little community, and I love the ways that we get to support them and work with them as well. And it's also special to me because I grew up in a small town, and and I know some of those experiences. Weston may just be a name on a screen to us, but I assure you everybody in Brady knows who Weston is, right? Growing up in Mullen, I, I heard plenty of these small town sayings and jokes. Like how you hear in a small town you can't get away with anything because before you get home your parents will probably know about it. Sometimes that was true as well. In Mullen, I I remember when I grew up, growing up, I had a t-shirt that said, where in the world is Mullen, Nebraska, on the front? And on the back it said, between Seneca and Hecla. <laughs> now some of you laugh because you know where those towns are. People in Kearney didn't get it at all. <laughs> I, I even remember a little homemade sign that someone had that said, Mullen, Nebraska, four places to buy beer, five places to repent from it. The thing is, we, we pick on small towns sometimes, and yet I know some of the best pieces of who I am come from those small town experiences. It turns out Elizabeth understood that as well. <laughs> she came from a small town. It says in our scripture today, when Mary went to a visit Elizabeth, it just says she went to a Judean town in the hill country. I've always found it fascinating that that this little town is so insignificant, so to speak, that they never even record its name in Scripture. Only God doesn't care about places, the location, or the status. God cares about our willingness. God can do incredible things through unlikely places and unlikely people. That's why this Advent season, our series, has been Unlikely Heroes. 
all of the different people who make up important pieces of this story. We started out the season talking about Zechariah, Elizabeth's husband. But the more I looked at these stories, the more I was convinced Elizabeth needed a week of her own as well. Do you ever notice how angelic visits seem to be kind of the norm in the Christmas story? Mary gets a visit, Joseph gets a visit, Zechariah gets a visit, and of course, the shepherds on that Christmas Eve. But most times, God doesn't send a message that's quite so obvious. I mean, the heavenly beings give us a a sense of wonder and awe in the Christmas story, but some of the more subtle signs are just as significant and maybe more, more relatable. In today's text, we pick up right after Mary has had her angelic visit, and immediately, it says, with haste, she goes to see Elizabeth. As the angel's talking to her in verse 36, the angel told Mary, And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for she who is said to be barren. Now, some translations say that they are cousins. I'm not sure that's maybe the best translation. But whatever their connection is, I am convinced it's way deeper than DNA. I mean, in some ways, it's like they're in very different places. Elizabeth is elderly, too old, they think, to have a child. And Mary is young, too young to be a mom. The Bible says she's a virgin. Now, in the biblical times, that word may have had a little different meaning. Some scholars will suggest it's really just saying that she's young. I think both versions are true. But the beauty of this story, I think, is is that these women become an incredible support system for each other. They encourage one another, speak life into each other. That's important because Scripture isn't just the story of what happened. It's a reminder of who we're called to be. And like these women, the gift of God isn't just something we receive, it's something we are called to give as well. I know, maybe Mary went to confirm this story she heard from the angel, but I think it's more than that. I mean, she's just received the most incredible and intimidating news of her short life. I mean, think about it, isn't it crazy This teenage girl has just found out she's pregnant, and she doesn't run to talk to her friend. She doesn't want to go talk to mom. She sets out to go visit this elderly woman, Elizabeth. Pastor Matthew Kratz writes, Mary would share her wonderful news with Elizabeth, confident she was the one person Mary could count on to believe her story. We get it. I mean... The miracle of immaculate conception is kind of a a staple in the Christmas story. (laughs) But if someone were to come share that with us today, we'd have our doubts. Other people would have heard this story and and maybe they would have thought, well, this is just some far-fetched tale she made up to cover up her sexual immorality. But not Elizabeth. She knows God can do everything anything because she's experienced it herself this year i was so intrigued in the timeline that comes with this story it's one of the reasons i i love scripture is it doesn't matter how many times we've read it before god can show us something new i mentioned in in verse 36 it says that elizabeth is in her sixth month And if we keep reading, you get to verse 56 where it says, And Mary remained with her about three months and then returned home. Now, I admit math is not my strongest suit, but six plus three, I can do that. It's nine months, right? I wonder. You think Mary was there when Joseph, or I mean, when John was born? Do you think it's possible that she got to hold the messenger 
before she gave birth to the Messiah. I wonder this, this young woman, a virgin, do you think she, she's so young she had never experienced seeing someone give birth? Was this the opportunity she had to see Elizabeth go through it, to, to understand what was going to happen? Was this what gave this young mom the bravery to have a baby in a manger? It's intriguing to think about. Whatever the reasoning, what, whatever the rationale for the visit, it must have been the most emotional and intimidating moment of her life. And Mary knows the one person she can count on is Elizabeth. And as soon as she walks in the door, God gives this amazing miracle moment. Verse 41, when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Sorry, I can't quite do it the way Weston does. He, he has a lot of leaped energy there, right? I mean, how, how cool is that moment? You know, Mary's been told who this child will be. Zechariah was told that that the Christ child, the Messiah, was coming. But it's this unborn child who leapt with joy, the first to truly worship the Messiah. As far as we know, Elizabeth hasn't had any prophetic dreams, no visits from angels, but the child inside her responds, and she knows. Then in, in verses 42 and 43, she proclaims, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? Talk about a confidence boost for this scared young woman, Mary. <laughs> Is this all real? Is this, is this really happening? Can I do this? And then Elizabeth speaks. And all her doubts disappear. What? What an amazing moment. What an important and, and often overlooked piece in our Christmas story. I mean, I think sometimes we read Scripture and, and we feel like it's unrelatable. I mean, angelic visits, immaculate conception, those are not part of our everyday stories. But if we just read Scripture to think about what happened, we, we miss the message that's still coming today. And I think, I think we have so many lessons we can learn from Elizabeth's story. One of those is that, that God is still speaking to us and through us. I mean, God uses the unlikeliest people in the most unexpected times, in these obscure places, to do the most amazing things. Have you ever noticed in Scripture that, that God rarely calls the rich and the powerful, rarely calls those the world would say are successful? God calls the least, the lost, the nobody from nowhere, and uses them to change the world. It seems it's often in the barren places God does some of his bigness miracles. But I wonder sometimes if we still believe that today. I mean, do we really believe that the God of the universe is speaking to us? I admit I, I sometimes struggle to hear the voice of God. I wish I was more tuned in to that still, small voice. 
I've often teased that, that my wife can hear that sweet, small voice of God, and, and he has to speak to me with a baseball bat. I mean, if it is not obvious, I did not see it. Like when I decided that I, I was going to go back to seminary, for me it was this huge revelation moment. I'm like, oh, this is so cool. And I go to all my friends and family to tell them, like, this is exciting. They're not going to know this. And all of them are like, yeah, I knew that. We knew you were called to ministry. Why didn't anybody tell me? And they're like, we did. <laughs> I missed it. It reminds me of the, the words of the great theologian A.W. Tozer. God is speaking. He is by his nature continually articulate. He fills the world with his voice. We simply must listen. I mean, working in ministry, I've met so many amazing people. And so often I meet people who who feel like they have heard this very direct message from God, that God has spoken to them plainly and clearly, this this is the message. For me, those moments are pretty few and far between. Ah, But when we listen, when we hear that voice of God, how it changes our lives. The same Holy Spirit that filled Elizabeth in today's scripture, that Holy Spirit dwells in us. There are are signs all around us of this God at work. And when we start doubting, doubting that this God wants to speak to us, we, we miss it. God wants to speak to you. God wants to speak through you. This is a a scripture that reminds us there is no place, no situation, and no person who is insignificant to God. I don't care who you are. I I don't care what you've done. I don't care what talents you have or or feel like you don't have. God wants you. He has a plan to use you to help change the world. I get it. Sometimes it's hard (laughs) to see those subtle signs. And and sometimes they feel completely insignificant. But I promise God is speaking. We just keep listening. If we, we just keep looking for the signs. The other lesson that that I think is so important is this text is the importance of mentors. One of my seminary professors always said, there are only two ways to gain wisdom, mistakes and mentors. (laughs) Trust me, the second one is much easier than the first. (laughs) I think Mary knew that. When life felt so overwhelming, she made a beeline for Elizabeth. Her cousin, her, her relative, her friend, her mentor. Oh, how valuable those people are. Sometimes what draws us together is having common experiences. And maybe that's part of what happened in today's text. Two women in very different Stages of life, both pregnant at the same time. But sometimes we're close to people because they're family. (laughs) And I know how important those relationships are. But I'm also keenly aware that not everyone has a family support system like Mary did. I think that's why the church is so important. Because we we are meant to be family as well. As the body of Christ, we are called to support one another. We're here to be friends and support systems and mentors to the people in the pews around us. 
I think every one of us should have a spiritual mentor we look up to and someone we're mentoring. I know it's not always easy to find those people. That's why I am so adamant about the need for small groups. Yes, we can learn something good from the studies that we're going through, but when it's done well, those small groups become your lifeline when the storms of life rage. My question, my my challenge, who is that person in your life? Who's the person you turn to when everything feels overwhelming? (laughs) Yes, my wife is, is maybe that first person for me, but we all have to have people beyond our family as well. Maybe just important is the question, who are you mentoring? Now, the church, it's so much more than a building so much more than a worship service and the Christmas story it it is about so much more than just a baby in a manger I know our world looks very different than it did on that first Christmas but our God is still the same and our mission is the same as well what if, what if this Christmas is a chance for revival? Revival in our own lives, in, in our church, in our community. Recognizing that God uses so many incredible people in his story. I mean, Jesus came to change the world but it was John the Baptist who started the revival. Joseph and Mary take center stage in the nativity scene, but the story begins with Zechariah and Elizabeth. God sends unexpected messages through the most unlikely heroes. And I'm convinced that's still true for us. God has a miracle, a a plan for you. Christmas, it's not just about what happened. It's a reminder that God, God works through unlikely heroes like Elizabeth, like you and me. And that, that is something worth celebrating all the time. Amen? Would you pray with me? Loving and gracious God, we are so thankful for all that you have given us. We are so thankful for the ways that you have called us to serve in this incredible story of yours. Help us, God, to find those mentors in our lives and and to be those mentors to others. Help us to reach out beyond our own family to this family of Christ so that together we we can still do amazing things for you. In your name we ask it. Amen. Well, as our time of worship comes to an end, rather than us having one last song, we're going to have another special music from our quartet. So as they get up here, I invite you to turn your attention to them. I promise you will love it. Check, check. That's a big promise for those of you at home. Look up, fear not, the angels say, Behold the Messiah come, the one of whom you've read. And as they spoke, them in that day, the heavenly hosts around the throne joined in to say, 
Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, goodwill to men. Heavenly angels announce his arrival in the little town of Bethlehem. Hallelujah to the Lord, sing holy, he was born to save the world from sin. Glory to God in the highest glory, hallelujah to the Lord, amen. And still today the wise men come Offering their praise to God's anointed one And as they spoke their hearts felt love This glorious sound was on my ear from up above Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, goodwill to men. Heavenly angels announce his arrival in the little town of Bethlehem. Hallelujah to the Lord, sing holy, he was born to save the world from sin. Glory to God in the highest glory, hallelujah to the Lord, amen. Amen. Sing glory to God. God in the highest peace on earth, goodwill to men. Heavenly angels announce his arrival in the little town of Bethlehem. Hallelujah to the Lord, sing holy. He was born to save the world from sin. Glory to God in the highest glory. Hallelujah to the Lord, amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest peace on earth, goodwill to men. Heavenly angels announced his arrival in the little town of Bethlehem. Hallelujah to the Lord, sing holy. He was born to save the world from sin. Glory to God in the highest glory. Hallelujah to the Lord, amen. Hallelujah to the Lord, sing holy. He was born to save the world from sin. Glory to God in the highest glory. Glory. Glory to God in the highest glory, hallelujah to the Lord, amen, 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 amen. Glory to God in the highest. Will you stand for a final word of blessing? All right, I do think I was right. You loved it, right? <laughs> Amen. Well, as we leave this time and place of worship, we are called to go out into a world where we live that same worship. Go, sharing this message with Christ. God uses the unlikely to do the amazing. And we, we can share that message too. Thanks for worship with us today. Sure.